Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another Chem Complete episode in the Aldehydes and Ketones lecture for Organic Chemistry. And today we're going to take a look at the first reaction that we will be studying that aldehydes and ketones undergo, and that is the cyanohydrin addition. So in the previous episodes, we took a look at the different ways that we can form aldehydes and form ketones, and now we are ready to start looking at the reactions that aldehydes and ketones will undergo. So all of that is coming up on the channel right now. All right, everybody, before I get started here, just a quick shout out to head on over to chemcomplete.com to support the channel. We have lots of guides that are available for an affordable price over there if you want to support us. We also have a bunch of free material that can help you with your studies. So visit us at chemcomplete.com and now on to this lecture. All right, so the cyanohydrin addition is going to be when you have an aldehyde or a ketone, and we'll go ahead and use a ketone for our example here. And you are going to subject that aldehyde or ketone to a uh, cyano group, which is also referred to commonly in organic chemistry as a nitrile group. Okay, so let's get our ketone here. We'll just put a CH3 on the other side. Okay, and then what we're going to do, typically this reaction is shown as an equilibrium because it is. Now, when this was initially looked at or discovered, it was just the presence of hydrocyanic acid that was utilized. However, it was found that if you add a small amount of base cyanide as a reactant, say sodium cyanide or something like that, you can get the reaction to go much faster than you would if it was just in the acidic form. Okay. Now, what we end up with is that we will end up turning the carbonyl into an alcohol and the addition of a cyano group, C triple bond N, will be the end result here. So we're still going to keep our methyl. And then we would have an OH. So this is where the name cyanohydrin comes from. Okay. The hydrin portion is referring to the alcohol that is formed, uh, which is related to water. And then the cyano group is the C triple bond N group that we have there. Okay, so what about the mechanism? What actually goes on behind the scenes here? Well, if you saw the first lecture that we did, we said these carbonyls are partially negative and partially positive. And because of that, they can act in one of two ways. If we have a positive starting material, the oxygen on the carbonyl can reach out and can protonate itself to kind of activate the carbonyl. However, if you have a negative group, it will primarily just act as a nucleophile and come in to the carbon on the carbonyl. And so that's what's going to happen in this case is that the C triple bond N will come in as a nucleophile. It will attack the carbonyl group. And in doing so, one of the pi bonds here, or the pi bond, I should say, because there's a sigma underlying it, is going to go up to the oxygen. Okay, so what we get is that the intermediate will look like this. You're going to have CH3, CH2, CO minus, and that would now have three pairs, right? Because the pi bond gave an extra pair up there. The CH3, right? And then we've added the C triple bond N, which has come in here. Okay, so this is really catalytic because we're going to reform this material when we get to the end of the reaction. And at this next step, we're going to end up with the HCN. And this oxygen will readily take the acidic proton in the HCN to regenerate the nitrile functional group in solution. All right, so this will come over here. It'll grab a hydrogen. 
and then these electrons can go back. And what have we done? We've reformed the initial catalytic starting base that can further this reaction, right? And then we're up here. So now we've got this final product here. Okay, so that is the cyanohydrin addition. Now, there's a follow-up to this, and the follow-up is that the nitrile groups are rather versatile in their ability to undergo subsequent reactions that are useful to organic chemists. And so we're going to take a look at two here. So let me redraw this product down here, and then we'll discuss the two major reactions that we could subject this to uh, moving forward from there. Okay, so we've got the ethyl group. We then have, here's this carbon, right? We said there was going to be a methyl. There's a hydroxyl. Okay, and then we've got a cyano group. Now, the cyano group can really undergo two different types of transformations here once you've attached it. So the first one is that we can use lithium aluminum hydride, okay, followed up with water or acidic water, H3O+. And when you do so, what ends up happening is you reduce the nitrile down to a primary amine. So you're going to essentially add a whole bunch of hydrogens to the carbon and the nitrogen, turning it into an amine. So the result of this would be CH3, CH2. Basically, everything's going to be the same here. However, you will end up turning the nitrile into a CH2, NH2. Okay. And so this result you refer to as a primary amine. Okay. Amines are another type of functional group, very important functional group, biologically speaking, uh, in relation to proteins, because we deal with amides when we talk about peptide bonds and things of that nature. Okay, And so amines being derived from that or talking about the nitrogen content in proteins, when we start breaking protein material down, amines are a very useful functional group. Okay, so that is one trick that we can use to further undergo an additional reaction after the cyanohydrin addition. Okay, the other one is that you can use essentially just H3O plus without the reduction occurring first and heat. And so this will subject the nitrile to what we call a carboxylation process. Now carboxylation process is going to create a carboxylic acid in place of where the nitrile was. Okay, so now we've got the OH group there. Still have our methyl group. So notice this is primarily targeting the nitrile, right? Nothing else. And then this becomes C double bond O, OH. So the nitrile group has become a carboxylic acid in this particular transformation. And then in the other one, in the reduction, it has become a primary amine, right? So we'll just note down here that we get a carboxylic acid. Okay, very useful transformations from the cyano group that we can undergo. So just to wrap this up, I want to bring one more point to our attention here which is that this is going to be very, very similar in nature, but I do want to run through this with an aldehyde. Okay, the big difference here being that the substitution pattern around what initially was that carbonyl is not going to be as high because we're only going to have a hydrogen here instead of a methyl or whatever other type of, you know, R group we would have with a ketone. So you could do the same thing. Remember that uh, per our discussion, in the very first lecture in the aldehyde ketone series, aldehydes are slightly more reactive than ketones uh, due to some uh, carbocation or partial carbocation uh, resemblance here on the carbonyl, right? And this one gets a bit more in terms of the, um, well, the ketone gets more hyperconjugation. This one would be more reactive because it has less hyperconjugation. So more reactivity is what the words I was looking for there. Okay, anyway. Uh,
you've got your nitrile, right? You've got your HCN. And so pause this for a second, see if you can figure it out. I'm going to go ahead and write the answer. And the answer would be as follows. You're going to have your ethyl group. Okay, then you would have a CH group with an OH up here. And then you would have your cyano group. Okay, so it's okay if you drew this H down here like this instead of right up there. I just wrote it up there for simplicity's sake. Okay, and this would be the reaction. Okay, and then you could subject that to either LAH, you don't have to, um, or you could subject it to the carboxylation. All right, so I think that wraps it up. That is the cyanohydrin addition. And next, we will be taking a look at Grignard's and hydride addition. So basically, reductions of aldehydes and ketones, and then using the Grignard reaction to turn aldehydes and ketones into alcohols. So this may be review for a lot of students that have already gone through an alcohol chapter or section of their course. But technically, aldehydes and ketones are the starting materials to produce those alcohols. So we are going to take a quick look at that again before moving on with other reactions. Okay, one more shout out to chemcomplete.com. Head on over there, check out the guides we have available. And of course, subscribing, keeping up to date with our content, learning with us is one of the best ways that you can support the channel. Leave a like if the content helped you. I'm Professor Tomney. I'm out of here. I'll see you guys for the next lecture.